Next up is Newcastle versus Brighton and Hove Albion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting fixture as well. The odds are pretty high regardless of where you go, eh? So, I mean, obviously, <laughs> regardless of where you go, whether you draw or Newcastle win or Brighton, they're very good odds, yeah, on Betway. Yeah. Um, I mean, Newcastle got, got the win against West Ham. It'll be high in confidence. They seem like there's a structure. Callum Wilson's coming. He is scoring goals, which is great. On the other hand, Brighton, Brighton played really well against Chelsea. Let me highlight that. They played really well against Chelsea. They kept the ball really well. The only issue with Brighton that I have is that sometimes they pass from the back. And you're sort of asking yourself, um, they were caught out in the first goal for Chelsea. And they've caught out before by Liverpool last season. And maybe Newcastle would see that as a, as a weakness and might have to take a punch on that. So mm -hmm. if I was to take a guess in terms of what do I think is going to happen in this game, I'm actually going to go... Newcastle win, and with the odds sitting at 2.65 on Betway, very decent. I'll mm -hmm. go Newcastle win. Score line, let's go with the 1 0. They don't score a lot, but they defend well. They don't score a lot, eh? I like the, I like the draw there because I, I agree Brighton could end up leaking a goal just because of the way they play, but I also think they knock it around nicely to net 1 2. Mm -hmm. So I think it could end up being a 1 all. Yeah, I, I this has got 1 1 written all over it for me. Um, uh, and at three three point zero nine odds, it's, it's not too bad. I it, I would I would take the draw if I was going to bet, but I'm not going to bet on this game. I'm not interested in Newcastle or Brighton and Hove Albion. Um, you know, I'd probably prefer really? to watch paint dry than watch them play football. But um, <laughs> I don't love football as much as you, Shakes. That's clear to the, to everybody in Sunday. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> you know, no, I've, I've 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 watched some games here and. Yeah, if you watch these games, yeah, then you should be able to watch anything. <laughs> I know, but I've got two, two, two youngsters, hey. So I've got to, you know, um, my some of my some of the time on the weekends, I've got to give back to my children. And, and if there's if a choice between Newcastle, Brighton, and Halloween, and my children, my children will always come out on top. And that'll give me time to get back home for the next game, <laughs> which is <laughs> Chelsea versus Liverpool, which is probably the uh, you know. Well, it's without doubt, the, the game of the weekend for me. Yeah. That's the biggest picture, man. I mean, and, and I won't lie, I mean, Oliver and, and, and Kevin, you guys should admit that the odds are also looking, seriously, they're looking yeah. amazing here. On <laughs> I mean, he's rated at 3.12 to win, and then and for a draw, it's at 3.72, and then Liverpool is rated at 2.17. And I'm so I'm surprised with the Liverpool one because I thought it would have been a lot lower than that because of, I think the way the Chelsea that I saw against Brighton wasn't really good for me. Um, despite the scoreline that they won in 3-1, I don't think they played really well. Um, I think obviously the quality got them the win against Brighton and I think the defence still needs fixing. Kepa making a huge mistake as well. And you look at the Liverpool game, yes, they conceded three against Leeds, but I just feel like Liverpool were complacent and if Liverpool go into this game and say, okay, guys, we are here to play, I see them beating Chelsea. Yeah. And, and, and with the odds at 2.17, talking about the Premier League champions here, we're not talking about a team fighting relegation, 2.17 to bet on the champions is a very good bet. Yeah. It's a tasty bet, eh? I love that bet as well. I think, like you said, it's strange that, that Liverpool aren't a bit lower because it's like even though they conceded three, you look at the nature of those three goals, they also scored four goals in a match where they conceded three. You look at Chelsea, you know, they won 3-1, but at no stage until sort of like the last 15 minutes did I ever feel like, you know, you guys are definitely going to retain this 3-1 lead. It looked the whole time like Brighton could come back and, you know, score a quick two. So I think you look at Liverpool's attacking now, so they'll definitely be able to net some. And then if you look at the defence, like misunderstanding with Virgil van Dijk and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name, the other defender, for that one goal. Yeah, and then um, that's the kind of thing that Klopp's going to remedy as well. He's not going to go into a fixture against Chelsea sort of like uh, brushing over the defensive errors. Like we know Liverpool can score. They've probably been addressing that kind of defensive structure in the week. I think, yeah, could definitely end up being a 2-0 2-1 to Liverpool. 
Yeah, I, for me, when I see 2.17 on, on... Liverpool, for me, are the Rodney Dangerfield of the Premier League. They get no respect. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, you know, the people during COVID that were saying, you know, that they shouldn't have won the league. You know, it should have been mm. all this, all this, all the naysayers and stuff like that talking about, you know, there should be an asterisk next to the season. And it's all bullshit. I mean, Liverpool are a quality side. They've got great team chemistry. They've got a great front three. They've got a good goalkeeper. They've got, I mean, they're strong. And, and Virgil van Dijk, yeah, people make mistakes. He's not going to repeat those mistakes game in yeah. and game out. He's a quality international footballer. And so when I, when I look at Chelsea, you guys are right. Uh, against Brighton, they, uh, to me, they had no team chemistry. They're still looking for an identity. Um, Brighton gave as good as they got. Unfortunately, you know, a couple of mistakes and a couple of goals went in. So that was a very flattering 3-1 scoreline to, to Chelsea. And I think that may have clouded some of the bookies uh, in the way that they've, they've, uh, they've mocked up this game. But for me, Liverpool at 2.17, I'm going to put another 500 Rand down on Liverpool straight up. Mm. for a Liverpool win because I just think that they're the much better team. So I like that for 500. That'll return um, probably around 1,085 Rand. Um, and uh, I like that bet. I think Liverpool to win 3-1. Sure. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. Definitely a very good bet. Funny enough, I did mention um, earlier on is to say this game is included in my, in my multi-bet slip. So I actually didn't go Liverpool win. No. That because that one, there's still like, even though I'm 90% sure, there's still that 10% that's still saying that, what if Chelsea actually win it? And then the one thing that I am definitely sure in my heart of hearts that this is going to happen in this game is both teams are going to score for sure. I've I've heard that somebody I heard that you don't have a heart. So what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> Only when Arsenal's playing. But it works. Okay. It's mechanical, but it works. Okay. So, so I think uh, both teams to score is a definite. So my bet slip is looking three. Um, Aubameyang to score against West Ham, one point six eight. Both teams score in the Chelsea versus Liverpool game, one point five three. And Leeds United to definitely beat Fulham at 1.62. And I'm going to put a nice, tasty 300 bucks on that. And my return could potentially be 1.2. Nice. nice. That's, a good, that's a good bet, eh? That's a solid bet. I've got a bit of a riskier multi-bet on if you guys want to, you guys want to hear it um, this weekend. <laughs> let's go, yeah. Really, so, we could do with a laugh, eh? <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, that's a... Well, look, I mean, there's, there's, it's a great weekend for, for, for multi-bets because of the odds being, uh, you know, the, you know, you got your Everton's, you got your Leeds that are, that are returning 55, 62%. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good weekend for multi-bets. I've done, a th I've done my, my two bets will be um, Liverpool, like I said, and, uh, and Arsenal, minus one, uh, minus one to win by two or more, 500 each on those. And then I'm going to put down, as, as Sheikh says, a tasty 300. Uh, Everton outright win. Leeds outright win. Arsenal outright win. Tottenham outright win. Liverpool outright win. And Manchester City outright win. Um, that returns, the 300 returns 9,871. So I'll be throwing up a Hail Mary on that um, and see if it comes in. Um, the, with the other, with Leicester versus Burnley. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, Burnley didn't play last weekend, I don't believe. Yeah, no, no, they didn't, they didn't play. But I'll try and breeze through this one. Um, you see, so they didn't play, but Leicester did, and Leicester got the win against West Brom. So I spoke to Oliver about this, um, the time when Leicester played over the weekend, because Burnley didn't. When Leicester played, they played against West Brom. And there were times where you felt like they were finding it too hard to break down West Brom, but eventually they did, credit to them. But now they face a Burnley side which can defend, which mm. can be resolute in the defense if need be. And also they can spring a surprise with Chris Wood. Chris Wood could get in a goal as well, or Andre Gray can get in a goal as well. And I think Burnley's gonna be too I think they're gonna have the, the, the wall of they're gonna have a great wall, and I don't think Leicester's gonna be able to penetrate. So I actually am gonna go for the 3.89 draw okay. odds mm. on this game. I'm going to go with the draw on this one. 
So, Oli, tell us what you think is going to happen in Leicester Burnley. Um, I agree with Shakes in terms of uh, that, that, that it could definitely be a draw. My hesitation there would just be Burnley's ability to score. Um, when I look at the way Leicester played, it wasn't really nice footy to watch. It reminded me a lot of someone that sort of just started playing FIFA. And you're just kind of trying to use your pace upright, knock the ball into the box. Um, it either works and you win 5-0 or it doesn't work, you know, and you've just been playing sweaty for the whole match. And uh, Jamie Fardy touched the ball five or six times in the, you know, in the first half. They didn't really get the ball to him. He's their sort of their strike player. Um, had a bet on him to score at any time, which luckily came off because he had two penalties, but he wasn't given very many opportunities. And I think if Leicester are going to be looking to dominate matches through attack, they need to be giving him a bit more space, um, playing down the middle a little bit more, being a bit more creative. Um, I don't think they're going to lose or draw, though. I think it's going to be 1-0, but uh, I don't think it'll be a great game of football. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I, Jamie Vardy's that character that just needs five seconds on the ball and to score one goal. He can do nothing for 80 minutes and then turn up, um, uh, uh, you know, well-timed run, and he's a he's top finisher. Yeah. So, you know, Burnley are, they do defend well. Uh, I like their, I like their, their coach, and um, he's, he's a hard-nosed guy. But I, I have to say that Leicester will probably sneak this 1-0. I don't think I'll be betting on the match, but if I had to, I would say that uh, mine would be Leicester 1-0. Um, Shakes is, is for a draw. When, when, so when you are... 1-0 Leicester. 1-0 Leicester. Wow. We've agreed a lot of this weekend. It's usually good. Mm, well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and last up... Oh, no, not last up. We've got Aston Villa versus Sheffield United. Um, again, I might, I might go and watch grass grow with my children. Uh, <laughs> this is why you're here because you are the, the soccer guru i mean i can't watch all these games you you you, you seem to yeah i mean, you're, I mean you're the legend man. let me let me first say that but even with this game guys i don't know if you look on betway the odds are very generous as well regardless where you go whether it's home win away win or draw the odds are looking very good aston villa's rated at 2.71 it draws at 3.16, and as well as Sheffield United rated at 2.74. Now, I watched this one Cup against Burton. They won 3 1, which was great, but they struggled. They mm. struggled to break them down. And we're talking about a Burton who is not in the Premier League as well. You know, they're not in the Premier League. They're not a quality side per se, but Aston Villa struggled. And you saw similar stories of what was happening last season when. You're sort of almost waiting for Jack Grealish to do something. Mm -hmm. And eventually they won the game, which is good for them. And then Sheffield United, on the other hand, they lost to Wolves. They'll be wanting to win. But I will be watching Sheffield United closely tonight in the Carabao Cup. So they are in action tonight. And Villa's already got two days rest. Mm -hmm. um, but because of the way Chris Wilder has drilled his side and what I saw from Aston Villa against Burton, I'm going to say... Sheffield United win with the odds at 2.74. Look, there's no doubt that the bookies can't separate these teams, really. You know, um, it's, it's like you say, generous odds on all three possible outcomes. And for me, Aston Villa are a one-man team. You know, as goes, as goes, Aston, as goes uh, Grealish, so do Aston Villa. And um, one-dimensional teams don't tend to do well. Um, I... I like I do like say I I like Sheffield United for the win as well. I'm going to go one nil for for Sheffield United. You know they're much they they are a better team than than uh, than Aston Villa. Mm. One nil Sheffield United for me. Wow, we, 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 did that like, there's a disturbance in the force when all three of us get it to predict the same scoreline. <laughs> yeah, and score four nil Aston Villa. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a that's a first. That's a first for us. Um, and then we have an interesting game, which I will watch this one. Uh, Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Manchester City. Uh, first game, first run out for Man City. Um, did Wolves play last weekend? No. Yeah, Wolves did. They actually beat Sheffield United. Um, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. See, this yeah, is they, why you they... <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, City didn't play. 
But Wolves did, and uh, I think Kevin, you mentioned in your multi bet slip that you're going with the Manchester City win yeah. on this one, and they rated at one point five five. And Wolves is sitting; they're playing at home, but they rated five point seven two. I thought the odds would have been a lot lower than that because Wolves are actually a quality side. The way they yeah. dealt with Sheffield United, it was the same way you would have expected Wolves to be. They're hard running. Adama Traer again. Jimenez on the goals again. You know, they're very quality. And I think this is a good game for Manchester City to start the Premier League with. And the reason why I say it's good is because it's, it's such a huge test. And if you get over this test as your first game, you're already putting a stamp in terms of wanting to win the Premier League and people believing that you can win the Premier League. And if I'm correct, I think City are favourites to actually win the Premier League. So 1.81. 1.81 on Betway. You see, so they are favorites to win it. So it's a very good game to start off with. I think they shouldn't take it lightly because if everybody remembers well, last season, uh, City took a 2-0 lead. They did get a red card, unfortunately, through, a, through the goalkeeper, but they ended up losing to Wolf 3-2. So they'll, they'll have nightmares, but they yeah. shouldn't take it lightly. And I think City can win. Last year. <laughs> Sorry. What's that, Oliver? So he also lost to Norwich in like the opening opening week or something. So we had a thing that happened. Well, I think so, I think so Jake, you're, you're spot on there, hey, in terms of saying it's a good game for them. I mean, a lot of people might be confused by what you're saying there, but but for me, it's a team unlike Norwich where they lost. You know, they've got to focus the minds. Wolves are a top uh, top quality side, so they're not going to go there and, and go through the motions and come out with a result. They've got to go there and apply themselves and uh, lay down a marker and say, yeah, we're, we're, we're in it to win it this year. Um, I, I still like, man, I, look, Wolves are a tough team to break down. And, and, um, and Nunez Gomez, it's, it's Nunez Gomez is the, is the coach? Yeah, yeah, Nuno Espirito Santo. Oh, yeah, I can't. Well, I'm not even going to attempt that. A Portuguese lad. Yeah. Yes, that guy. Portuguese that guy. He's a good guy. He, yeah, and he's a great, he's a great tactician, great, great manager. I, I, I think it'll be a tough game, but I do think that Man City will edge it two one. Um, and if they don't, then all the naysayers are going to start, and all, you know the the next game is going to be crucial, and all the other stuff that uh, we tend to start uh, uh, heaping on teams that uh, lose one one or two games. You know, and and Kevin, I must admit, I mean, I think if all all of us, maybe you can say something with regards to this. For a throwaway bet, Wolves to win at 5.72 is not bad. Mm. You know, that is, that, I, I'm starting to think about it, eh? I'm starting to think about it because Wolves just have it in them. They completed the double over City last season. Mm. But if I had to put my head into it and I have to guess what I think the score is going to be, I think Kevin's going to get this right. City mm. to win it to one. Yeah. You guys will never believe it. What, 2-1? 2-1. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey. It doesn't seem like I'm copying you guys the whole time. <laughs> well, there you see, we've had, we've had two... Uh, we'll, we'll try and put up our predictions um, on, 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 our, on the website so you can all see them and see how we do. Um, but uh, a, a, a very interesting week ahead, weekend of football ahead and some yeah. good bets out there. No, oh, no doubt. Definitely some good bets. I mean, I'm, I'm already, once I'm done here, I'll be looking at that Southampton and Tottenham game again. I'll be looking at that Newcastle and Brighton game again. I'll be looking at Aston Villa and Sheffield United game again because in all three games, regardless what bet you put down, and if you could get it right, the odds are just so much, are just really high and they're very good. And for those punters out there that want to know what it takes to be successful in punting, just look at Shakes. I mean, God, there isn't. He's a walking encyclopedia on soccer. <laughs> um, so, Shake, thanks for, thanks for being on the show again. Loving it. And uh, you certainly know your stuff. Yeah, man. Look, guys, thank you. It's always been a pleasure. Oliver, obviously, we're going to communicate over the weekend with regards to yeah. some of these results. Especially Kevin, that Tottenham thank you game. For the opportunity. Yeah? Especially that Tottenham game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Look, Kevin, thank you for the opportunity. Really appreciate it, guys. Pleasure, Shakes. Uh, always a pleasure, mate. And uh, have a great weekend and best of luck with your, with your bets. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shakes.
Let me introduce you to John, a deep sleeper, big dreamer. His Saturday began just like any other, with football. He studied it. He visualised it. He deconstructed it. John's day began just like any other. It ended like this. Who finishes beautifully? Great place, right time, and City lead in the derby.